Welcome to the CBS show. It's the CBS show. Helping you expand on what you know. Throw in a meme of the week and a review of the screen. And you have a show that covers everything. Hey, hey, Team Stevia. Welcome to episode 76 of the Stevia show. A talk show podcast that covers pop culture, world news, local artistry, and everything in between. And for our fourth week in quarantine, this is Steven. And this is Lydia. And we hope everybody is having a great day uh, at your house. Uh, looks like things are getting better, but we we, we will see about that. So, yes, uh, yeah, we'll so see. We'll see, yes. Uh, so thank you all so much for joining us on episode 75. We hope you all uh, mm-hmm. had fun, but we're just going to go straight into the meme of the week. Now, we do have two today because we since we switched our recording days from Thursday to Sunday, we've been a week behind on the meme of the week. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for, for two weeks ago... Our edge lord was, of course, uh, Matt Malden, aka Teddy Flood sixty nine four twenty. So you can see it on the screen here. Um, I believe this is Ford versus Ferrari, and it says "On my way to post OC." And there's a sign uh, being held up saying uh, "Dalton won last week, so it's your turn again to win." Edge lord, and it says "All right." Uh, so I think that's what that's from. Uh, but I haven't seen Ford v Ferrari. I need yes. to though. Uh, and then it's Lydia, good. and then our own Lydia actually won with a awesome meme, um, if I do say so myself. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah I mean. It, it's really good because it's got Thanos in it and everybody loves yeah. it, everybody loves Thanos. And you'll see on the screen here that it says President Trump, President Trump, as he tells Americans to inject themselves with Lysol. And it's Thanos saying a, fa- a small price to pay for salvation. Uh, so <laughs> I thought that was hilarious given the current circumstances. Uh, I actually have a scar from where I injected myself with oh, Lysol. Uh, yeah. So I... I mean, I'm as good as Invincible, so I, I don't think anybody can touch me at this point. Nope, so. you're ready to roll now. <laughs> you are, you've got, you'll never get sick ever again. No, absolutely not. No, now that I have this nice, uh, this this equivalent to bleach running through my veins, I am doing yes. great. Uh, so stay so stay updated with me next week for Steven's health report on how, on how the Lysol yeah, yeah. is coursing through my veins. And yeah. for Lydia's media review, she has two things today too. Wow, so we both have been, I guess, uh, keeping up with uh, media and memes. So what do we have today, Lydia? Well, you know, movie theaters are still closed, and I don't even know if we're going to go back to the movie theater for a long time when it does open, um, depending on their, like, little, uh, what they, their precautions they take. So Matt and I watched um, Midsummer, which is on Amazon Prime, and basically all I have to say is WTF about this okay. movie. <laughs> Um, it's about a couple that travels to Sweden to visit a rural hometown fabled midsummer festival. What well, begins as an idyllic, idyllic retreat quickly devolves into an increasingly violent and bizarre competition at the hands of a pagan cult. Oh, fun. now not only is this couple on this um, vaca- summer vacation, but it, they also bring um, four friends with them too. So it's a group of students and they're they all travel to Sweden with their Swedish friend. And let me tell you, it is one of the weirdest movies I've ever seen. Um there at all times Matt and I were like, oh my God. We asked each other like six different times if we were just gonna shut it off because <laughs> it was just it was too much. It was too much. But we finished it. We we pushed through and finished it. Okay, okay. But if you don't like super violent movies or I mean it wasn't super violent, but there's some gory things in there and yep. like some nasty and it's just uncomfortable and awkward and weird. So if you don't like movies like that, don't watch this. I gave it a five out of ten. It probably should really be like a three out of ten. Um the only good part of this movie was that Florence Pugh's in it and she's amazing and I love her. But it was freaking awkward and I am never gonna watch this movie again. So it kind of sounds like a ham-fisted attempt at a Quentin Tarantino movie, but just not done right. No, no, oh, no. Okay, because you mentioned the gore and the violence and things getting increasingly it's, weird. It's yeah, no, it's not like a Tarantino movie at all. It's okay. Gotcha. I don't know how to explain it. It is just there is parts of it that you just don't know what's about to happen, and then it happens, and then you know somebody's face is smashed in, and you're just like, well, what the heck just happened, and why? Okay. And it's okay. Like, and it takes place like over a week because this cult is celebrating this festival and these Americans have no idea what's happening. So they're just there and then it just keeps getting worse for them. And it's just. Of course, the Americans have no idea what's happening. That's. Of that's, course. Uh, I mean, uh, it's typical. It's typical. And, and as an American, I definitely agree with that stereotype. So, but that's. Yeah. So I just wouldn't watch it really again ever in my whole life. I would never watch it again. Okay, cool. So I'm. 
Um, and it. then this next one, both of us watched over the weekend. Or where did you watch this one? Uh, yeah, over the weekend. Yeah, we finished it yesterday. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, Waco. It's called Waco on Netflix. Um, it actually came out in 2018, I think. Um, but this is about the FBI and the ATF sees religious leader David Koresh's branch. Um, Davidian compound near Waco, Texas in the spring of 1993. Um, I thought it was very well done. I gave it an 8 out of 10. Uh, it kept me on edge and interested in, throughout the whole thing. And um, it is based on a true story, which is both interesting and very sad. So yes. um, if you don't know the story of Waco, you should definitely watch this uh, Netflix series. It's it's pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it originally aired on Paramount Network and then Netflix mm. got, I, then I think Net, Netflix got distribution rights to it. Um, cool. But, yeah, but Abby and I watched it and it was really good. And I, I like how it's based off the books of um, of, of Tibbs or Thibodeau, uh, who was mm -hmm. one of the survivors, and then Gary Neusner, who was one of the FBI uh, agents at the time. So they so they they cited both sources from the Branch Davidians as well as the uh, as well as the FBI and a a lot of people think that uh, the FBI and the ATF handled this really poorly. I mean, I think oh, pretty yeah. much everybody agrees that, you know, David Koresh was sick in the head, but whenever they, you know, literally uh, torched the compound, you know, even though it was unintentional, tear gas is literally against the Geneva Convention. So, like, you and I can't go fight terrorists or war criminals with tear gas, so why should we no. be able to just, you know, throw canisters at our neighbors, you know? Like, we shouldn't be allowed right. to do that. Uh, so, it was a really, really good one. I think I'd give it a eight out of 10 as well. I mean, I think from what I understand of the Waco siege, of course we were one, uh, at the time. So we weren't really too, mm -hmm. uh, too keen on cults and religious leaders. Uh, we were yeah, probably, not too involved in that one. Yeah. We were probably too busy watching, you know, Barney and Sesame street, <laughs> whatever. Uh, probably, right. yeah, you know, probably that's for the best. Uh, but I think it does paint a pretty good picture of what actually happened, but I would for sure recommend people watching it because it's a, I mean, I've always found cults to be kind of interesting and especially being, no, for sure. and especially being in Oklahoma. And uh, as we mentioned last week, uh, this was one of the two events that led to the Murrah, uh, the, the Murrah, um, the Murrah center bot bombing in Oklahoma city that, that Timothy McVeigh, uh, was the perpetrator for that. The other being the Ruby Ridge standoff, which was mm -hmm. actually mentioned in the Waco. It siege. was mentioned in there. Yeah. And it turns out both of those people, uh, the um, the Weavers uh, from the Ruby Ridge incident and then the Koresh and the Branch Dravidians, uh, they did not do anything wrong. It was just the government really messed up. And actually, a really quick, a fun fact, a um, so the Weaver family, the surviving members of the Ruby Ridge family, the government paid them $3.1 million in damages um, back in the really? 1990s because there was no wrongdoing by the Weavers there. So. Yep. Did they pay any of the um, Waco um, people out? Did we know that? Uh, to my knowledge, no, but I do believe that the Branch Davidians who are alive, I think they were acquitted. Uh, to my knowledge, on our on on all charges, because the way the video, um, the way like the whole video scenario panned out, it was the ATF who did fire first. So then, in that case, oh, yeah. you, you know, you are defending yourself. I mean, you're at your property. Uh, mm -hmm. So the whole thing, the whole thing's just crazy. And especially um, in Texas, oh, like of course, of all places, like yeah, they're gonna shoot back because oh, hello, it's Texas. It's Texas, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be like if I broke into some random person's house here in Oklahoma and yeah. I, I get shot. It wouldn't be good for you. Yeah. Well, you know. Well, why'd you shoot me? Well, because it's Oklahoma. That's what. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. what happens. So that's what we have on that today. And uh, so we can go ahead and Lydia, what is the latest with COVID? Woohoo! We got our COVID nineteen update. Um, I looked back, and actually, we've been doing this update since January twenty eighth. So, so only a few weeks after. Um, we'd really learned about it. So that's kind of cool. That so cool. our worldwide numbers are uh, 2,920,666 cases. So we will probably hit 3 million by uh, early this coming week. Um, and then 203,670 deaths. So that's unfortunate. Here in the United States, we account for nearly one third of all the world cases, from um, which means that we have 941,628 cases with 54,024 um, deaths. Um, here in the United States, though, they say we have tested 5,184,635 people, which is um, amazing because that num number has jumped. Yes. Astronomically awesome. in the last um, couple weeks. 
I want to remind people that just because they test you doesn't mean the test only shows if you currently have it. It does not show if you had it previously. And correct me um, if I'm or wrong. If it's, or if it's in your body. Well, actually, yes, it does. It is if it's in your body. Go ahead. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong, because um, so you did mention that, um, for, and also for the listeners. Um, so for people who have been tested for COVID-19 and they tested negative, there's no way they can definitely, definitively prove that they didn't have COVID-19 at one point. So like, so if hypothetically I had COVID but didn't get tested until after I recovered, they, we can't go back and say, oh, that's what you actually had, correct? So with this test, the test that I'm talking about okay. is... That is correct. But they have said that they have made an antibody test, which you can take, um, and that can show if you had it previously or if it's still in your system. So the antibody test, um, they say it's like, I think it was like um, 30% false negative. So, you know, it's not the still, most trustworthy thing, yeah, but still kind of wishy -washy. neither is a lot of those tests anyways. So, um not a lot of people have actually gotten to do that. Also, it costs like $80 and you have to get a referral from your um, doctor to get it for the antibody test. Gotcha. For this COVID-19, for just this COVID test with, um, that we've done 5 million of, um, those are all the like drive through testing places, places okay. at the doctors and things like that. Cool. Right on. Thank you for that tidbit. So, yeah, because I, yeah, I, was, I was wondering about that. Yeah. Um, and then states are beginning to reopen. So here in Oklahoma, we are... I'm going to start reopening on April April um, 30th is our last day of quarantine. Um, I have Matt here in the background for YouTube. <laughs> looks like he, he didn't got, want to say hi for the podcast, like he, I guess. So. Uh, looks like he just got done playing uh, ball golf. Yes, he just got nice. done playing ball golf. Boom. Okay, cool, cool. Um, and basically the government said that, you know, states can start slowly, slowly reopening here in Oklahoma. We are doing a three-phase um we're supposed to be doing a three-phase reopening, which is a good idea in theory, but a lot of the scientists say that Oklahoma should technically not reopen until June 18th. So that's actually a month and a half. So we're opening a month and a half sooner than what scientists are telling us. But, you know, since when have we listened to scientists, I guess? Uh, well, also, um, to kind of um, add a very poorly timed joke to this, uh, we are indeed the Sooner State. Uh, so <laughs> but so by, op by opening yeah, up Sooner, it. we are honoring our... Uh, our state history our of being uh, of being cheaters. So uh, there's another fun fact: is uh, Sooners mm -hmm. uh, were literally cheaters in the land run, but we can talk about that. Uh, we can talk about that yeah. later because uh, that has nothing to do with COVID-19. Um, but I, I, I know I was talking to you earlier, and Governor Stitt, I think it was uh, April the 24th, is whenever he said we could start reopening, and it was based on mm -hmm. some models. So I mean, I I still think we should he should have at least just stuck through for the next six days just to see how things mm -hmm. if things would have continued to improving then maybe looking at reopening in phases because it's because i feel like oklahoma has been doing a good job of um people recovering and doing the tests and things like that so i mean really mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of things what what would have been six more days you know right i mean, I mean no yeah and like our tulsa's own gt bynum said everything's being shut down to the 30th you know whatever same with oklahoma city and norman they're being pretty harsh on their right. their stuff too um but yeah, Stitt said that like haircut places. So we went, um, we were driving yesterday and there are people outside the uh, haircut place around where we live, like waiting in line to go get their haircut. Gotcha. And I just, at what point in time did haircuts become like, oh my God, I need a haircut. Like... <laughs> Um, Why are people freaking out over haircuts? Who um, cares? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, issue the six P's, which is prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Uh, so basically, uh, I think it's people just not planning accordingly. I mean, if you, I mean, th there's no way we could have known how deep the pandemic would have gone. But once you heard on the news that this was coming to the United States, like you should have at least had an idea that some things were going to change. So you should have got your hair well, cut. Right, because every other country was closing before we ever even closed. So right. I just, when people are like, you know, protesting with signs that say, I need a haircut, I'm like, and how how is that important right now? I also think that it's... Like, people are dying. You don't need a haircut. It's right, fine. Right, And I also think part of it is, it's that it's people who they don't want to go back to work but they want right. people who service them, quote unquote, to go back to work so their life oh, can have yeah. some semblance of, of normalcy. But that's all 
that's all he said, she said type sort of thing. So, I mean, we mm-hmm. really shouldn't be getting too much into that, but, but I'm totally with you in that. I mean, what, like, yes, of course, all workers are essential to a point, but getting your haircut is not worth risking, risking a virus, you know? No, well, it's not worth protesting with a whole bunch of other people in the same area. It's right. just this. It's like you just look so stupid with the sign that says, let me get my hair cut. Well, you, already like that look, is- you already look stupid with your hair, and then you're already out looking more stupid with your signs right. saying, I need yeah. a haircut, and like, you know, five, 5G towers are causing this, and but they're still wearing yeah, a mask. Yeah, 5G. <laughs> Oh my yeah, gosh, it's ridiculous. So ridiculous. Yeah, people are crazy. Um, speaking of crazy people, though, our second bit is about Kim Jong Un. And if you are listening, we were only saying that in transition. So please do not, you know, uh, take that too seriously. Please don't. Yeah. Don't, don't uh, bomb us. Please. Yeah. So we so we do have some conflicting sources here. So Lydia, we can go ahead and start with uh, with your source. And of course, both of these might be equally credible, as we'll discuss later. Sure. Um, so what are we going? Uh, what, what are we starting with? Oh, yeah. So um, on uh, April 25th, 2020, TMZ reported that Kim Jong-un, 36, the supreme leader slash dictator in North Korea, is reportedly dead after a botched heart surgery. Their source is from China, who had sent a team, including medical experts, to aid in some medical needs in the country. This is, of course, speculation only. Nothing official has been announced from the country saying that he has indeed died. Um, I will... Put, I will say that when Kim Jong Un's dad died, it no, we didn't know about it for like two weeks afterwards. Correct. correct. Um, so what does this mean if if he did die? Um, many believe that the long suffering North Korean people will get some kind of relief if he is indeed dead, but the country will still be ruled by the family dynasty since it since it was established after World War II. It is unclear right now who would become the leader. He um, he does have a sister, Kim Yo Jong, but in a patriar- patriarchal nation, that might not work out so well. So that basically means that it's a society controlled by men. Um, so it is rumored that Kim Jong Un and his wife Ri Sol Ju have three children, but I couldn't find much detail on them. It is said that they are between the ages of three and ten years old, and people speculate that his eldest child is a boy who might be able to succeed Kim. But according to Kim's wiki page, um, only one child is listed, and it is a daughter, Kim Ju A, who is seven years old. Apparently, the only reason we know about this um, daughter is from Dennis Rodman's trip in 2013 to North Korea, where he says he met Kim Jong Un's wife and their newborn daughter. Um, and that was all from the Business Insider uh, article that I read. Awesome. Now, with how twisted uh, this timeline that we're in is, because it, it a lot of weird events have happened the past, oh gosh, like six to ten years, you know. So I just want to keep with the weird, and I and I just want Donald Trump to make Dennis Rodman our ambassador to North Korea, because I mean, if if we're gonna go, it's worked so far. He's it, been over there three times, I think. Right? right, right. But if we're if we're gonna go crazy, we might as well just say, hey, you know, like there there are no might limits. Well. The, everybody's yeah. gonna be an ambassador, including Dennis Rodman. <laughs> uh, so I think that's uh, hilarious uh, that Dennis Rodman and Kim Jong Un uh, have a friendship. I mean, I mean, maybe not hilarious. It's hilariously interesting. It is hilarious. Yeah. Because I mean, no, no, I mean. I mean, President Trump probably thinks that he's Kim Jong Un's friend, but really, <laughs> Dennis Rodman, Rodman is like the only American that is a friend. Like, could say that he would be friends with Kim Jong Un because he Kim Jong asked Dennis to come over there three separate times right, and do like a basketball exposition and stuff. And like, like they that. were doing like fun stuff. They weren't doing like right. political stuff like <laughs> him and Trump and him and the other presidents do around the globe. He like came just to go hang out with Kim Jong Un. Right, which is which is which is which is like <laughs> absurd, kind of like. <laughs> well, exactly. This, this this whole timeline is just this timeline that you know you and I are, are growing up in. It's so skewed. It's so I, so I'm gonna go ahead and call on President Trump. You heard it here first. Go ahead and make Dennis Rodman our ambassador <laughs> because at this point, Mine as well. who cares? <laughs> like that is right. not the weirdest thing that could happen. And I yeah. mean, also, like you said, they were doing fun stuff, not the boring shaking hands, kissing babies. Um, right. So whatever. But about Kim Jong Un, um, I'm about to pull out one of my favorite words in the dictionary. However, uh, South mm-hmm. Korea's top foreign policy advisor, Moon Chung In, who is the advisor to Moon Jae In, who is the president of uh, South Korea. Uh, they are suggesting, however, that Kim Jong Un is, quote, alive and well on April the 26th. 
Regardless, Kim Jong-un was absent from North Korea's annual Day of the Sun holiday, which is very suspicious because the Day of the Sun holiday is dedicated to the memory of, of eternal leaders Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il, the grandfather and father of Kim Jong-un, respectively. Uh, so that so Kim so Kim Il Sung is the was the first uh, supreme leader of North Korea, of course, following World War II, and then Kim Jong Il was uh, Kim Jong Un's father, who um, was the leader of North Korea from 1994 all the way up to 2011. So the so the majority of our uh, of our lives. Um, so this day is considered to be the North Korean equivalent to Christmas because fun fact, North Korea has actually banished all religion. Uh, so yep. you, so you can't be religious, uh, in North Korea. They, um, they see Kim Jong-un as their deity. basically. Correct. And Kim Jong-un's absence does raise questions about the state of the North Korean leader. Cause that is a big deal. And, um, despite all of these conflicting sources, it is widely agreed that he did in fact undergo some sort of heart surgery, but it is difficult to know what exactly happened as North Korean state media hasn't officially confirmed or denied the leader's fate. And as you mentioned earlier with Kim Jong-un, um, the rest of the world didn't find out until about two weeks later until mm -hmm. the North, the North, until the North Korean state ran press, um, mm -hmm. got all their, all, all of their ducks in a row to try to come up with the story on how it happened. Um, and to of course report the passing of Kim Jong, Kim Jong-il. Uh, so we will indeed see what plays out. So as basically, Basically, at this point, a coin toss on whether or not he's alive or dead. But I, I suspect we will have a definitive answer this week. Oh, for sure. He'll he'll make an appearance sometime. Right. If he's alive. And and, and I do. Um, they did say that his uh, train is at his home somewhere yes. in North Korea. But a lot of people are curious about that because it is in the way of it looking like it's going to depart. But he typically does not take his train home. He typically flies home or drives home. Right. So a lot of people are like, why would the train be there if something big didn't happen? Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. And, and, and there and there was a, a picture that went viral across some forums on the Internet that was somebody who appeared to look like Kim Jong-un in a glass coffin. Um, so that, of course, raised speculation. Oh. However, it is so easy to fabricate things on the Internet that I, I personally wouldn't even believe the, the mm -hmm. glass coffin one. Um, but that's but of course, it's all it all it all draws speculation. Uh, mm -hmm. But also, I would like to point out that there were some people on Twitter who were uh, saying that they were basically basically excited that Kim Jong-un's sister might rule North Korea. Mm -hmm. But then it's like, she's still going to be the same oppressive dictator that her brother and her, and her father was like, just because mm -hmm. she's a woman doesn't mean we have to immediately celebrate. So I just thought that was kind of weird in general. Um, but if Kim Jong-un is indeed dead, that will raise some serious foreign policy implications on what can possibly done can possibly be done uh, about the uh, North Korean state, but of course that all is pending on whether or not he is alive or dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and speaking of task forces moving back to the United States, what do we have going on here? So rumor mill has hit, um, and there is a rumor going around that Disney has formed a task force. That um, this task force is in charge of changing the way Disney will operate inside the parks. So guests won't have very many inter interactions with each other. Um, I've heard that they've been um, trying to come up with ways of making their 3D shows into 2D shows so people don't have to share glasses. Because if you've ever been there, if you go to um, like Philhar Magic, for instance, you, you use the 3D glasses and then you put the 3D glasses away and they go and they wash them and things like that. Well, now um, making it 2D, you won't have to do that at all. Um, there is another rumor that they've been updating queue lines to have, um, like squares every six feet. So people will be standing six feet apart in lines, um, attractions and food services, etc. cetera. Uh, this I think is pretty, um, pretty not rumored because I think, I think this is actually happening because this is, uh, we saw pictures from Disney Shanghai and Shanghai actually has done that where they put blocks in every attraction for um, six feet apart. Um, rumor also has it that Disney is going to make an announcement today, Monday, April 27th, 2020, on when they will be reopening. So stay tuned for that. So as our uh, official D Disney aficionado or mouseketeer, uh, what would you prefer to be called? Imagineer? Is there a... Ooh, I would love Imagineer. 
Okay, so we'll call you an we'll we'll call you an Imagineer. So as okay. so as Team Stevia's official Disney Imagineer, what is your guess on when Disney World will reopen? I don't know. I don't know. Oh really? I, okay. I've I've been like fighting because there's part of me that's like I really wish they'll open in May because then maybe Matt and I can still go, but I don't think that they'll probably open until July or August. Really? Okay, because I did see some speculation that they might not reopen until January of 2021, but I was like, that's probably I way did too see far that out. Too. That's probably way too far out. Do you think so? Yeah, or? I saw I saw that too. I don't know if they'll do a full year of closure. I think that they're going to, if they open back up sooner rather than later, it'll be probably to like just Florida residents or maybe just United States residents. They won't let anybody from the outside come in. Um I feel like there's just going to be a lot in a lot of um, precautions taken when they first reopen. Uh, I've heard of anything from, you know, only having 10,000 people in the park instead of the max capacity of 90,000, you know? So, um, which is crazy. Because, we saw, go ahead. I was going to say, which is crazy because 10,000 in one space is still a lot of people. But then whenever you compare it to 90,000, it's like, Oh, like that's, you know, one ninth of capacity. Yeah, people could really nuts. like spread it out. If there was only 10,000 people led into the park. Um, another thing too, we saw is that, um, Disney was actually doing, uh, hiring, like having jobs posted for the Epcot world showcase, but the, um, hiring date like to start was August. So that's why it makes me feel like they're not going to open from until like later on in the summer. Gotcha. Well, that's um, because they sent home. I mean, they sent home all of their international CPs and those are the ones that typically will work at Epcot. Right. Right. So every pavilion has all of them. So if they're rehiring and not the start dates, not till August, then I don't see why they, then that means like nobody would be working in Epcot. Maybe they won't open Epcot. I don't know. Maybe they only are open magic kingdom. Who knows? Yeah, ex yeah. So that, that's all really interesting points. I mean, because especially during the World Showcase, you would want to be true to, or you want to be authentic to the world. Yeah, and you know? I don't think Disney would ever. I don't think they would open without having that authenticity. They oh, yeah. would always, you know, they would always have somebody who was from Mexico in the Mexican pavilion, and so on and so forth. So having them show not not start days till August makes me like really worried that it's not going to be for a while. Yeah. And I think that'd be the safest thing too. I mean, of course, just like with our haircuts, like it sucks that, you know, we can't go on our, our on our yeah. Disney vacations or whatever. Um, but I mean, I will say as much as I like to rag on Disney as a company, because, because I mean, they do some kind of questionable things, but I will say that place, Disney world and Disney, the company is a well-oiled machine. Uh, and, no, for sure. and I think, and, and I would trust uh, that Disney would actually be taking the best precautions necessary because even though, um, I think you said they're losing like a million or something dollars a day by keeping the park by keeping the parks closed um that's something that the disney company can very easily recoup because of how much money they have uh, again the whole right. the, the whole philosophy on a million versus a billion um so mm -hmm. so i mean um i do think that disney's gonna of course um, take this extremely seriously because and the, also the last thing Disney wants because things that you've told me before is that they don't want people to die at their parks because they, they, a lot of times they'll actually wait until they're literally just off park property um, to mm -hmm. point out somebody dead uh, out of an accident yep. that wasn't even Disney's fault because nobody dies at Disney World. Um, so, nobody dies at Disney World. Which So that'll be re really interesting to follow. Um, and in the sports world, we are seeing leagues that are working on um, opening back up and starting. Um, the first one I saw was was the NHL, the National Hockey League, um, and they are working on um, they're working with the NHLPA, which is the uh, the players' union for the NHL, on a potential restart to the season. Uh, possible solutions include having empty arena games at select cities, depending on individual cities' COVID statistics, uh, going straight into the playoffs and slowly letting players back on the ice. And then in the NBA, uh, they are definitively opening reopening practice spaces on 
May the 1st. And as of now, that's all we know. And then finally, in international soccer, um, as COVID continues to slow in many European countries, European soccer leagues are looking to attempt continuing their seasons in the coming weeks. And it is expected that Germany's Bundesliga will be the first to come back with empty arenas. Um, so mm -hmm. I think these are all kind of um, creative, uh, kind of creative uh, solutions to the problem. Um, I think for, I mean, I, I mean, I can't speak on basketball because I'm admittedly not that big of a basketball fan. Uh, but with but with hockey, I think if they were to um, maybe just do only the Canadian arenas and having empty arena games because Canada does have a smaller population by a lot than the United States, mm -hmm. that, that would have a much lower rate of infection. You could still televise all the games, no problem. And then I think heading, uh, maybe doing one more final week of regular season. Um, so that way the teams that are making playoff pushes can still have that chance. Um, and then jumping mm -hmm. straight into the Stanley Cup finals. I mean, that's, that's, that is what I would do depending on the statistics, but we will of course right. wait and see for that. Um, I did hear too that the NFL is thinking about playing games without people in the stadiums as well. Right. And then what's nice, um, and, but the, and then the, the NFL also has the benefit of, um, ha um, has the benefit of not starting until, um, I think September is whenever the NFL typically starts with August being. Yeah, they do. Yeah, preseason August, and then September typically is week one. Yeah, so they still have quite a bit of time to wait it out and see what happens. Um, oh, and speaking of football, um, for those of us yeah. who weren't watching the Stevia League uh, during the draft, um, I can't remember who was drafted first, but who was drafted first to the Bengals? Yeah, so the NFL draft is actually, I think, still going on. Um, they do round one Thursday, round two and three Friday, and then I think they did like three rounds yet um, Saturday and three rounds Sunday. Anyways, uh, the number one overall draft was Joe Burrow from Louisiana. He is now at the um, Cincinnati Bengals. Yes. Um, so that is cool. So congratulations uh, are in order for uh, for him. And uh, hopefully that will improve the Bengals because they had a abysmal season uh, last yeah, year. That's so. why they got the first pick because yes. they were bad. They were very bad. Absolutely. Um, so we also did you see that the Bills actually didn't even get a pick until um, round two, late round two, like the yeah. 26th pick in round two. Yeah, I think that had to do with a few offseason trades that the Bills made a few yeah. years ago. Uh, but I think the Bills are in a pretty good position. Um, uh, the way they got some good guys. They, oh, they did. Yeah. I mean, especially with how Josh Allen's continuing. Um, to, he, he's yeah. wanting to keep on getting better. And then the Bills defense is is a monster. It is totally insane. Mm -hmm. uh, because even uh, we, we, we mentioned this last year, even against like offensive powerhouse teams like the New England Patriots, they only kept them to a couple of touchdowns because of their defense. So, I mean, I personally think the bills are in a good position to keep on doing good, but I oh, am curious sure. to hear your thoughts on, um, on green Bay picking a quarterback in the first it's round. Shameful. It's okay, shameful. Because I, I do know Aaron Rodgers, he is getting up there in age, but whenever he's on, he still has like three or four years left of his right. contract. I'm pretty sure. And also I feel like they are just, we needed a wide receiver. We needed wide receivers. Like that should have been the first pick. Because Aaron has basically no one left to throw to. Um, tied in. We need a tight end. Even a, a running back. Like, we really needed some offensive. And then they picked a quarterback. It was disappointing. Yeah, because – and and – and even though, right, so so Aaron Rodgers, like I said, he is getting up there in age, but he still has like three or four seasons left on his contract. But also, whenever Aaron Rodgers is healthy, he is insane. Like there's there, there's, yes. real, there's really no stopping him. And, um, and kind of like you mentioned earlier, and we talked about this last season, that Green Bay – depends on Aaron Rodgers because he carries that team and like that mm -hmm. that shows how good Aaron Rodgers is now right. uh, now not being a Green Bay follower how good is Green Bay's backup quarterback like would, would, would he be in a position to overtake Rodgers during an injury or did they really need this this quarterback they drafted I mean he I can't remember what his name is he's okay he's fine he did take over Aaron's spot when Aaron when he was hurt like two years ago um and yeah like i think they probably did need a better quarterback but even the quarterback they picked wasn't like the oh. best one out of the picks so it's like 
Right. It was like a stupid, it was just stupid. It well, was and, dumb. Right. And also since Green Bay made a deep playoff run last year, um, cause they made it all the way to the NFC or AFC finals. I forget which conference they're in. Um, but basically they made it all the way to, to, to one before the Super Bowl, And so that probably put them in a bad draft position because just like with any other sports leagues, the higher you are in the playoffs, the lower your draft mm-hmm. number is. So they probably got like pick 27 or 28 i'm just guessing and yeah, so they probably got a 27 or 28 quarterback so that'll be interesting but i mean i do think that they should have gone for a wide receiver yeah it was a waste of a pick for end. sure oh and speaking of tight ends uh gronk is back now gronk, too. yeah i was gonna bring that and, up too and, and, yeah. and he's going to the buccaneers following uh following one tom brady so i think that'll be yeah we could see a buccaneer or super bowl run we haven't seen so, it in a long time I, I think the last time the buccaneers made the super bowl was in like 2002 three or four um whenever they Somewhere played whenever there. they played the raiders and they won um so yeah. that was forever ago and but i i mean I think Gronk still has some gas left in him, but Tom Brady is the issue for me with with with, with the Bucks. Uh, just crazy because because Tom Brady's last two seasons for Tom Brady standards was terrible. Um, I mean, oh, horrendous. I mean, I mean, again, for you know, new listeners here at Team Stevia, we are not disputing that Tom Brady is isn't the greatest quarterback of all time because he is, but he is indeed way right. Pa- but he's way past his prime. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how he does with the Buccaneers. But again, I still think that it'll equate to a uh, Brett Favre situation. Um, oh, for which, sure. which will be sad, but we'll see. But I, but yeah. I, but, but I think Gronk's going to be solid. I, I think Gronk's going to be fun to watch again. I'm excited. Oh for yeah. It'll be fun time to yeah. watch. Oh sure. yeah. And Gronk was on the mass singer. Uh, he, he was the, uh, he was, oh, the, was he? yeah, he was the white tiger. Uh, it was a, a lot of fun watching him. Uh, I mean, I, I, um, I thought it was Gronk from the very beginning, uh, and he was not very good <laughs> at rapping, oh. um, but it was so cool seeing him being on mass. And then it's like freaking Gronk. Who's huge, you know, like next to Nick Cannon, who's small. So right. It's it's interesting. Uh, and then finally in the world of sports, Lydia, what's going on with Stevia league that is heating up. We are almost done with, uh, our first ever Stevia league. Uh, what a week in Stevia league. We had our conference quarterfinals and they were exciting. Joe defeated Blake and will defeated Steven to be the two Indigo plateau finalists while Daniel defeated Derek and Parker defeated Paul becoming the two Hyrule kingdom finalists. Joe and Blaka, what he, <laughs> why, why is it not Joe and Blake fight literally, um, came down to the final stock in game three. It was a nerve wracking tune into Facebook live this Tuesday and Thursday for some more Stevia league action. You can also watch, um, our, our last week, uh, matches on Facebook too. You can just go back and watch the, the reactions. Cause it was pretty, it was pretty. It was really good, Steven. Yeah. Um, the, the game between Joe and Blake up gave me high blood pressure. Like that was the, it, oh, it, like so good. W- uh, whenever we say it literally came down to the last stock, we are not uh, like improvising that or whatever. It was literally one, one, like their final life in game three. And it was amazing. It, Joe's move was insane. And, and yeah. then, um, and then I edited, uh, um, I edited a video featuring, um, the NHL and NBC's, uh, Doc Emmerich, who's one of my favorite <laughs> yeah. sports announcers. Uh, I put him over the plays and it, it, it was good. And, it and, was so good. And it just hypes it up that much more, uh, because yeah. of how exciting it is. So I'm excited to see how it plays out. Um, I'm really looking forward to the match between Joe and will, I think that's going to be another really good, hard fought battle. Um, and I'm kind of nervous for Parker, uh, but whenever we saw, uh, Daniel's first, first, first game against Derek, uh, Daniel looked to be kind of on the defense. So maybe he was, Par- looked a little rusty kind of, you know? Yeah. But it, so maybe if Parker can capitalize, Daniel might not be very doing very good on his first games and Parker could capitalize that. Maybe so. So I'm excited to see how, it, uh, I'm excited to see how it all plays out. Um, and we are working, um, on talking with the competitors to potentially see if we can have the conference finals on this upcoming Tuesday. So tomorrow, and then the final mm-hmm. match on Thursday. So that way everybody has the same amount of time uh, to practice. Um, yes, love so, that. Ho- so hopefully we will see that. And I think that about does it for today, unless you had anything else you wanted to add. That's all. Cool. Right on. Um, so um, as always, you can um, um, find us on social media all over the place with the handle at the Stevia show. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on whichever podcast app we listen on, which, whichever podcast app you listen to, because we are indeed everywhere. Uh, if you're on YouTube, search for the Stevia show and be sure to subscribe uh, and then mash the notification button. 
We'd like to thank our anchor producers for their continued support. You can support us for as little as 99 cents a month and receive exclusive Discord roles and bonus episodes every month. Every single month. We are very we are very stern about that. Every single month. Every bonuses. month. Every month. We're very stern. And then we also have merchandise available uh, through our bio links. So whenever you visit us online, just be sure just to click the link in bio, just like everywhere else, and click on merch, and we ship nationwide as well. So if you are a newfound Tampa Bay Buccaneer fan, we will send you... Uh, uh, a shirt if you uh, if you want one. I mean, it won't be a Tampa Bay oh, shirt, yeah. but we'll send you a Stevia shirt, you know. Um, <laughs> so sure. uh, we will. So be sure to tune in next week for episode 77. And if things do go well, um, that will not be a remote episode. So we are very mm -hmm. excited to return to uh, the Stevia studio because uh, it has yes. been very lonely the past four weeks. And it's <laughs> been it's been weird recording this way, but I am glad that we've been able to, to keep on doing what we think we do best and provide you all with decent content at reasonable reasonable prices. Um, <laughs> but as always for now, this is Steven. And this is Lydia. And we will see you all later. Bye.